Hello learners, in the previous lecture I have discussed about the pre-processing of the text data. So we have pre-processed the text data using following multiple steps. So what we have done, we have removed the strings and then we have done like lowering the text, then we have removed the punctuation, removed the stop words and in the finally we have done the lemmatization. Okay. And in the last we have created one single function for pre-processing of our text data whenever we, are, we have to do the analysis we can call that function okay so what was that function is so this function was we have multiple operations and uh, this particular example we have taken up because uh, we are doing the lemmatization and if you are doing the stemming uh, instead of this lemmatization you can do the stemming and then uh, initially we have uh, like uh, removed the this string called published by elsewhere limited elsewhere limited all right reserved and elsewhere limited then we have transformed the case of the text to lower case after that we have removed the stop words and then we have like uh, removed the punctuation with this uh, using g sub function and we have used g sub because of uh, the reason that when we are using the remove punctuation function it was uh, like removing the dash and there was no space was there okay so there was example called low efficient low energy so in on those cases that dashes were removed but uh, there was no space okay that become a single word so that is why we have used this particular uh, uh, function then we have removed the white space whatever the white space was there after that we have done the lemmatization of strings okay and finally after all these operation we have returned the uh, the final clean data okay and also this is the one of the thing what i have discussed about function is that that if you exclude all these things and just simply you call this 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 so it will give me the output of this only okay so if we want to run all the these uh, operations so we have to like whenever this operation is called it should be assigned to that data okay so now we will do the topic modeling on this particular pre-processed text data. So what topic modeling is? Topic modeling is a kind of text mining that identify patterns in the text data. It is a statistical technique that process the text data and identify the topics in the collection of large volumes of documents. It works as unsupervised way. It helps in organization and retrieval of documents. So, it has various applications in different domains like in libraries, it helps in analyzing books and journal content to organize them. Then for literature review, we can use topic modeling for processing multiple scientific articles. Then for social media analysis, where we can use topic modeling in identifying topics from the content posted on these platforms. So, in our context, we have title and abstract which we haven't analyzed. Other than that, whatever the data we have got from those bibliographic data sources we have analyzed. So, these are the two things which are yet to analyze and by analyzing this title and abstract, we can extract that what exactly the topic has been discussed in those content. Okay. So, to do the topic modeling, we have different models, but among these, LDA is one of the popular models to use the topic modeling over the text data. So, I will be discussing the LDA in this particular lecture. So, what LDA is? LDA stands for latent richlet of allocation. So, what latent is? The latent means is that something exists but that is unknown to us. Okay. So, this latent means that is something exists, something exists but unknown to us. To us. So, in our context, what is unknown? The topics. So, the topics are unknown to us. Then, the Dritchlet. What Dritchlet means is? So, Dritchlet means the distribution and the distribution of what? Distribution of words and the topic. So, it is a distribution. So, what allocation is? Allocation is based on distribution of topics and words allocating the topics to documents and words to topics okay so allocating of topics okay so it was given by david blue andrew ng and michael jordan in 2003 
so in simpler word we aim to identify the topics and words of each topics that are present in the text data and after identification we label the each document with the topics okay so there are two key fundamental principle of lda is so one is that each text document is made of a mixture of topics so you can take like we have this document 1 document 2 document 3 document 4 okay so it has maybe topic 1 topic 2 topic 3 topic 2 topic 4 topic 6 topic 1 topic 2 Okay, there is some parameter is there based on that what we say that this particular document is related to this topic. Okay, so maybe we can assign that uh, parameter to this topic one here to 0 0.49, 0 0.21, 0 0.30. Okay, based on this uh, parameter, but uh, we can say that uh, the document one is uh, mostly related to topic one. Okay because it has that parameter value is 0 0.49 but that parameter is we'll discuss uh, well we will be discussing more about the topic modeling okay then uh, the second principle is that every topics are made of group of words okay so all these topics are made up of uh, some group of words okay and those words like words 1 words 2 words 3 okay then this this have some words okay and similar the way we have some parameter value for this uh, topic one and document one in the same way we can have a another parameter uh, which define the uh, like uh, value of uh, this uh, words in a topic okay so let us now briefly see the lda model so in the lda model what we have is that uh, we have this number of documents then n is the number of uh, words in a given documents then alpha is the dirichlet parameter that is per document topic distribution and theta is topic distribution for document and this w is observed word and z is this word topic assignment after applying the lda model we have the topics which are made of uh, words and then we have the this uh, documents which are also made up of to topics so we can show that uh, these are the document document 1 where there this is topic 1 topic 2 so basically we get the distribution of uh, topics per document okay so this whole structure is mathematical and quite complex so what we will do we'll understand this whole uh, process of lda with an example on our sample data set so let's move to r studio where we have already pre processed the text data so after pre processing so this was our data set was there we have already pre processed it first we will make the corpus you may face this kind of uh, error so what exactly it is so 
basically we haven't called the but those libraries related to this okay so we will be using uh, tm topic models uh, uh, library so now if i run this So here, what I am doing is, I am just uh, calling that this is my data set and make it a corpus, okay. So after creating a corpus, we will create a document term matrix. So what exactly this document term matrix is? So document term matrix is a kind of a matrix that shows the relationships of words and document. It shows the occurrence of a word in a document. So let us understand this uh, document term matrix with a small example. So, let us assume that we have these two documents, okay, where we have the text data that this is document 1 and then this is a document 2, okay. Now, uh, before doing any analysis, we will do the cleaning. Because like here if you see this good is in lower case and this good is in upper case. So, we will clean this uh, two documents. So, we will be using this particular uh, like uh, function we have already created. So, I will just simply run this. So, my documents are cleaned up. So, this is first document and this is second document. Okay. Now, we will create the corpus of these two documents. So, we will make the corpus. So, if we see the document of matrix of this corpus, so it created a matrix, okay. And if we have to see in the matrix form, let us say it is like. Uh, So, this is a document term matrix is, okay. If you see here, on the left hand side, here, this is exactly the documents, okay. So, we have document 1 and document 2. Then, we have the terms on here. So, it is boy, cook, good, driver. And then, we have the occurrence of each of the uh, word in that particular document, okay. So, we have this uh, boy. So, it has uh, one occurrence. So, if we see our document. So, this is our document. So, the term boy has been appeared in D1, document 1 and boy has also appeared in document 2. So, that is why we have written 1, 1. Then, uh, if we see the cook. So, cook has appeared in document 1, but it is not appeared in document 2. So, that is why it is 0 is written. Then, uh, good good is appeared in both the document so this is also good and this is also good so it appeared here both here and then we have driver so driver is appeared only on document 2 but not in document 1 okay so that is why 0 is there okay so this is what exactly document term matrix is so it shows that what exactly the term is appearing in that particular document okay so if you see this particular output it describes many things okay so, what exactly describe that this particular document term matrix has two documents and four terms, okay. So, what those four terms are? One is boy, cook, good and driver, okay. So, if we see our uh, clean document. This was first clean document and if we see our second. Okay. So, total terms are, this is common. So, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. Then, it is saying that known sparse entry 6 slash 2. Okay. So, what 6 is representing here? 6 means that there are 6 known 0 entries are in the matrix. Okay. And what 2 is showing? 2 means that there are 2 0 entries in that particular matrix is. Okay. So, if we see our matrix, we can easily say that there are 6 non-zero, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, there are 6 non-zero entry and there are 2 uh, zero entries are there, okay. Then sparsity, sparsity is 25%. So, 
like total it should be like 8 should be there but uh, out of 8 2 are uh, 0 so it will be 2 by 8 into 100 so it will be 25 percent so we have 25 percent sparsity then we have maximal term length okay so the longest word which have the maximum number of letters okay what is the length of that word that length is 6 okay it means that there is one word is there which is the longest in terms of number of letters okay so what that word is where we have six letters three four four six okay so that word is driver okay and after that it is uh, showing that weighting is based on term frequency okay so what this weighting is so weight shows that how terms are weighted in the matrix Weighting by term frequency represent the frequency of each term in the document. So, here one represent that there is only one occurrence of that particular word in that document. Okay. If there is two occurrence, so it will be two. Okay. Let us see like if we count the frequency. So, we will count the frequency on this. And... So, what we have done here is we have selected the uh, occurrence of all those four words in all the documents. Okay. So, what we got it here is that the total occurrence of boy is 2, the total occurrence of good is 2 and the cook and driver occurred once in a, each document. Okay. So, this is about the document term matrix. So, now we will back to our sample of 50 publication of that JCP, what we have already processed and we have already created a corpus. So, this was our corpus. So, we will create a document term matrix. So, to create a document term matrix, we have this uh, function called document term matrix. So, as practice what we used to do before using any function, we used to see that uh, what exactly that function is. Okay. So, and how we will see it? We will use the question mark. Document term matrix. And if we search here, it will give us the old details okay what exactly uh, document term matrix this function do okay and also we have the term document matrix also we can do that also so we create this so now if i see this what exactly this document term matrix output is showing that we have 50 documents okay so that is all we have already seen that we are taking up the sample size of 50 then we have number of terms is 1671 okay then if we see here what exactly it is showing here is that there are like 4434 non zero entries are there in the matrix okay and rest 79116 are zero entries in the matrix okay so what exactly it is showing is it is showing that that most of the terms do not appear in most of the document. Okay. So, uh, and if you see our sparsity is 95 percent, then uh, we have the maximal term length is 17. So, we have a word whose length is 17 letters. Okay. So, that much big letter we have in this particular document term matrix. Okay. Then uh, we have weighted uh, based on the term frequency. Okay. Now, uh, we will see our top words of our uh, this particular data set. So, what we will do? First, we will make it a matrix. So, if I run it. So, our, this is done. Now, if I will see the call sum. Okay. So, we have 1671 terms. So, 671 words are already omitted to display. So, but uh, the call sum is created. So, we will assign to this uh, freak and if we see the, so we have total 1671 that is okay. We have already discussed. Now, we will display only top 50 words, okay, which are occurred most in our data set, okay. So, what we will do? We will just order that uh, particular uh, words in a decreasing order of their occurrence and then we will select only the top 50, okay. So, if I do like this. So, these are the top uh, 50 words in our data set. So, the to topmost word is environmental which is occurred 85 times. Okay. And uh, we already know that how to export this particular data set. 
So, we will use the function write.csv, we will assign this to a value top 50 words and here if we run this, so like this and if I run this like top 50 JCP word. So, where this file will be created? So, I request you all to pause the video here and just let us know in the discussion forum where this file will be located. So, this file will be located in my the current directory and what exactly my current directory is? So, we will check where my current directory is. So, it is in documents. So, this file is created in the documents. So, I will go in documents. So, these are the 50 words that file is created, okay. So, now we will be doing the topic modeling, okay. So, for topic modeling, the first thing what we have to give is the number of topics. So, let us assume that we are taking up the number of topics to 5, okay. So, we want to label all 50 documents in within these 5 topics. So, to do the topic modeling in R, we are using the package topic models and inside that we have the function LDA because we are using the LDA algorithm. So, again we will see how to do LDA in R, we will use question mark and it has all the details like how we have to call. So, this X is that particular data set, whatever data set is, then K k is the number of topics. So, in our case that number of topics we have taken up to 5, okay. Then we have methods. So, in methods we have two methods. One is VEM and another is uh, GIFS uh, methods. So, but we will be using the GIFS sampling method as it is a widely adopted one. Then it has some control value, okay. So, we will be uh, like calling this function. So, this is our uh, document term matrix we have already created. Then we have this uh, topic num. So, we have assigned these uh, 5 uh, number of topics. So, here the k will be 5. Then method is gives and then control is equal to list seed 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, what this seed is? This seed is used for reproducible purpose. Okay. So, in statistical analysis, it initializes the generation of random numbers that follow a specific sequence of numbers. Setting a seed to a value get you the same results whenever you run the code multiple times with the same seed value. Okay. So, it ensures the LDA analysis consistent on multiple runs with reproducible output. Okay. So, we are setting up the seed 1, 2, 3, 4. And after running this uh, LDA function, I am assigning to a object LDA JCP, okay. So, if I run this, so it is created. So, this uh, LDA output has give um, many things. So, the first thing we have this beta. So, what beta is? Beta is exactly the per topic word distribution. So, this is our uh, object which have uh, LDA fitting on uh, JCP 50 publications and now we are using the matrix beta, okay. And here we are using the tidy function, okay. So, if I run this, so our library is uh, tidy text. So, we will just call it. So, this is the error. So, now if I So, these uh, like uh, topic is there, then uh, it has the term actor, like these are the some different terms are there and it is given the beta score, okay. So, we will assign to a object this topics.jcp. Now, so we will view this particular object. So, it shows that there are total 8355 entries are there and there are three total columns, okay. So, how this uh, 8355 entries came? So, basically we have total terms 1671 
and over that we have uh, five topics so it is computing uh, the beta of uh, all the words in all those five topics okay so it is calculated like for actor for all the five topics okay so if we see here our length is 8355 now if we want to see that uh, actor is uh, related to which topic okay so here we have the data set of uh, actor term with five beta score in five different topics okay so if we run this we get this uh, score so actor is uh, mostly related to topic 4 okay because it has the highest uh, beta score so if like if i sort it down here it is displaying that this is the highest so where this value was this value was in for topic 4 so this particular actor term is related to this topic 4 okay so this is how we can uh, identify that what all uh, words are related to which topic okay so if you see here we got the data that each topic and the beta score of each 1671 words okay but we want to know only the top terms okay where the beta score is the highest okay so what we will do this kind of little data manipulation we can achieve by using the deployer package we will be using our this uh, topics so it has the all topic term and beta score so this is our data set is i will be grouping it by topic so we want to group it by topic and this particular operations is from the package deployer okay so this is my the new object where i will be taking up the uh, jcp terms where the beta score is the highest for each of the topic and then what exactly this function is this function is about where the top 10 value where beta score is the highest so if i do like this so this is the error because of uh, uh, we haven't called the library so if you haven't installed the package deployer so you have to install first and then you have to call this library so okay now if i run this okay so we'll see the our terms for all the five topics we have different words so in the earlier example we have discussed about that if we have 1671 terms are there and we have the five topics so we found that our entries were 8355 but in uh, in this case if you see we have 52 entries so why it is so because our only condition was here is that top 10 those beta score based on that we want to have the words okay so here if you see on yeah you see we have these three terms which have the equal beta score and that is why it has uh, like uh, our condition this has taken up 11 uh, terms instead of 10 okay our uh, initial goal was to take only top 10 but this is like uh, our uh, 9 10 and 11 value they have the same beta score okay so 11 values is is here then for topic 2 we have okay we have 10 only 10 terms for topic 3 we have yes for topic 3 also we have two terms which are having the same uh, this beta score okay that uh, one is uh, this uh, beta score of uh, end and another term is term which is having the beta score of this so these two terms have the same beta score okay that is why this uh, has also taken this extra term for this particular topic okay so we have two extra term in this uh, particular uh, data set okay so what our goal was our goal was to take only top 10 for each five topics so we want to get only 50 terms but here we get the 52 terms okay so now we'll like we have the topics and we have the beta scores 
so we'll plot uh, each of the beta score corresponding to that topic what we will do because our data is like just height so we'll visualize the height so we will use the function uh, this bar plot and if i run this so here if you see i won't give the 1 is to 10 okay because my values for topic 1 are from 1 to 11 okay but if you like i have the values of 1 to 10 then i have to use here 1 to 10 only okay because i have already seen the data so i'll just uh, run this so what exactly these are the height what the beta score of each of the words then this exactly uh, argument is saying that what would be the name name are the terms so these will be the names and this will be the heights then uh, i am calling so this is i am calling for having those vertical uh, labeling okay and color is red okay so if i run this so this is what our plot is for uh, beta score of uh, each of the words corresponding to topic 1 in similar way we can go for topic 2 so here i am taking up the range from 12 to 21 because my topic 2 has only 10 terms so changing to green then for topic 3 so in topic 3 we have 11 so this is topic 3 then we have topic 4 and finally we have topic 5 okay so now uh, you can export these each of the plot and then you can analyze it that is a very straightforward way that you export each of the plot and then you analyze it uh, by seeing all the five plots one by one so can we have a such kind of a plot where we can have all these five plots in a single plot so how we will do that we will use the function par and where we will define that that all the five plots should be in one row and it should be of five columns okay so one row this is first plot this is second this is third this is fourth this is five so if i call this this is okay now if i call all these oh error so what this exactly error is this ex error is figure margins too large so it basically because whenever you are uh, plotting it it is uh, visualizing on this part so you have to like if you do like this margin was too so now if i if you do call it so these are my all the plots in one single frame okay now i can zoom it okay so now you can easily see that what all uh, words are related to like this is topic 1 this is topic 2 topic 3 topic 4 topic 5 we can also label this uh, here by this is topic 1 topic 2 topic 3 topic 4 topic 5 okay so this is your practice that how we will be having uh, here topic 1 topic 2 topic 3 topic 4 topic 5 if you face any of the issue uh, like uh, you see first question mark how we can do that and still you can't able to solve so please let us know in the discussion forum we will explain in, maybe in the live session or uh, through discussion forum that how you can have here this uh, uh, title okay you can export this uh, by either save as image or pdf so whenever you are saving it you just remember the give the aspect ratio so that uh, the full plot come on in your uh, frame So now uh, by setting this to one by one what we are saying that we want uh, only one uh, row and one column of that plot okay. So we have set to our earlier format.
so this is like if you have a big data set okay maybe 50000 documents or maybe 60000 documents how like giving range and if you have like 20 topics that, that could be too uh, complex thing okay it is okay for a small number of topics so for that we have this package called ggplot2 which makes our task easier and uh, like uh, using combination of packages like uh, deployer and ggplot2 we can make a single plot of uh, these all five topics i am leaving up to you to give a try do let us know your experience whether you will you are able to do it from using this uh, kind of a code or you want to go with this step by step for a large number of topics okay after this like we have the topics and terms now uh, we want to classify the document that what exactly the topic is associated with this particular document so for that we have this score called gamma so gamma is a posterior uh, topic distribution for each documents okay so like above uh, we have done for matrix uh, beta now we'll call it uh, as a matrix gamma and if i do like this so here we have 250 rows are there okay so what exactly these uh, 250 rows are there so we have 50 documents and we have the five topics so 50 multiplied by 5 250 so these 250 rows are there have gamma score for each of the topic and for each of the document okay so like for document 1 we have the gamma score for all the five topics okay so for document 1 we have gamma score for topic 1 topic 2 topic 3 topic 4 topic 5 okay so we'll call it and we'll assign to this object jcp gamma and now if i see it so if we see here we have this document 1 and this topic 1 and corresponding gamma score document 2 topic 1 gamma score so like first it is displaying like where this topic 1 can come in all those 50 documents okay so it has total 250 entries okay so now we want to know uh, the gamma score uh, for our uh, this uh, document 1 so how we will do that we will just uh, extract only the gamma score for uh, document 1 so for that we will be using this function called subset so what subset do we can uh, check with the uh, question mark so what subset uh, do here is that subset basically extract a small portion of the data based on particular condition okay so here our condition is that that we have the 250 entries inside those 250 entries we want only the where document 1 is there okay so if we see here document 1 so for document 1 we have these five topics and their corresponding gamma score and if we see that topic 1 gamma score is 0 0.09 0 0.21 then 0 0.09 then for topic 4 0 0.49 and then 5 is 0 0.10 okay so now we'll take it like uh, wherever the gamma score is highest okay we will be taking up that uh, particular topic to that document okay so here if we take in that kind of a condition so we'll assign this this particular kind of topic 4 to document 1 because it has like 0.49 and other are quite less uh, gamma score okay now we will set the criteria so what our criteria is that so in all the five topics wherever you will find the maximum gamma score assign that topic to that document okay so what exactly we have done for this example here we have assigned the topic 4 to document 1 based on the high gamma score of this topic 4 so again we'll use the same deployer package and this operation that this is a our object where we have the gamma score where we have document topic and gamma then i am saying that for this you group it by document then you slice it by maximum okay so you this whole data set is there you group by document and slide by maximum where the maximum gamma score is there okay 
and then in the finally you ungroup this particular part where the maximum gamma score is there you ungroup it and store it as abstract jcp class okay here we have the object abstract jcp class which takes the value of highest gamma score of each of the topic for all the 50 documents okay so if i run this now if i see the abstract jcp class so if you see here we have the 50 documents and uh, our topic is 5 but we have assigned only single topic so based on this condition we should have only 50 entries but again here we got the 51 entries so what could be the possible reason the possible reason is that we may have the case where we have the gamma score for two topics is same and that is why that both the topics had been assigned to this particular document so let us see where we are getting that two equal gamma score Okay, so there is a document 3 where we have the this uh, gamma score for topic 2 is 0 0.26 and the same way 0 0.26 equal gamma score. Okay, so we, here we can take our decision and we can make an extra condition that if equality is there, then we will go ahead with this kind of a topic. Okay, so that is based on case to case. So, but uh, see this kind of thing can happen okay if you come with the idea that only you want the maximum value so if we see uh, the gamma score for document 3 for all the five topics if we see so if we see that there is like topic 2 has gamma score of 0 0.26 then topic 4 is 0 0.26 and we have topic 3 also which is close to these two topics okay so this is you need to like analyze like uh, uh, what topic you have to assign to this particular document okay then we can save it all these object as a external file so how to save it so we'll call this uh, like uh, this is our object and we'll uh, call the file name okay so whatever the file name we will define it will be saved there okay so i'll just save this now our all 50 documents are mapped with those five topics so now we want to see that what topics has been mostly published in jcp in these 50 documents okay how we will do that so we will be using the table function so using the table function we can see that okay what topic has occurred more so if we use this table function so this is our map data and under which i want to see the occurrence of topic okay so if i do like this what exactly it is showing it is showing that topic 1 uh, is occurred 10 times topic 2 9 times topic 3 6 times topic 4 12 times topic 5 14 times from here we can conclude that uh, like uh, on topic four, uh, 5 we have the 14 documents which are, have been published in jcp okay and the least number of uh, documents are uh, published in on topic 3 which are ju just 6 okay so this is how we can just do the topic modeling and then we can assess that okay what exactly the key topics have been uh, published on those documents okay so this is all about uh, the topic modeling analysis of our 50 documents so what our 50 documents are basically those 50 documents are title and abstract of uh, 50 publications uh, of uh, journal of cleaner production but uh, we can do this analysis on our big data set also so do try uh, using this code for your analysis on another data set so in this week we have discussed about the basic of text mining is what text mining is and after that we have discussed about the regular expression and how regular expression can help us in uh, doing the pre-processing of the text data which is very important step before doing any analysis on the text data after that we have discussed about the topic modeling using the ld algorithm we have used different packages for doing the ld analysis so this is all about this week see you in the next week thank you